When the stock market goes down, most people are full of nervousness and anxiety. But dividend investors don't have to worry about this problem because we are focused on cash flow. Cash flow continues regardless of whether the stock price of a dividend stock is going up or going down. This is true for dividend stocks and dividend ETFs, but it's also true for covered call ETFs. Whether it's QYLD, XYLD, RYLD from Global X, or other covered call ETFs such as NUSI, JEPI, and everything in between. In this video, we are looking at the year-to-date performance of 11 different covered call ETFs to see which one has the lowest volatility, which one has performed the best during that time frame. As customary, I've built out a spreadsheet for us to review to take a look at these 11 different investments to see which one has the best year-to-date performance and which one has the lowest level of volatility. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet I created for this video. As a reminder, all of my spreadsheets that I've created in the past, including the ones I'll make in the future, are available to my Patreon community. In addition to that, you have access to my monthly dividend stock spreadsheet. You have access to the private Discord channel. In that private Discord group, you have access to myself as well as other like-minded dividend investors. You can bounce ideas off of each other, and it's a really great community to learn from. Additionally, you are aware of all of the moves I make in my own portfolio right when I make them. If you're interested in learning more about that, check out the link down in the description below. Okay, so here are the 12 different covered call dividend ETFs we're taking a look at in this video. Most of these you're probably familiar with. We've got QYLD, XYLD, and RYLD, which we reviewed in the previous video, which are the Global X, NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, and Russell 2000 covered call ETFs. Then we also have XYLG and QYLG, which are variations of the above. Essentially, the only difference here is it's a little bit of a balance between growth and income where they do the exact same thing as QYLD, XYLD, and RYLD, except they only write those at-the-money call options on 50% of the portfolio. The other 50% is free to grow. Then we've also got Devo, the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Then we've also got QRMI and XRMI, which are definitely protective dividend plays, where in addition to selling covered calls, they actually also purchase a protective put, similar to NUSI. Then we've got J the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, which tracks the S&P 500 and also writes calls. Then we've got NUSI, which tracks the NASDAQ 100 and also is a collared ETF income option where they sell covered calls and also purchase a protective put. And then lastly, we've got the Nuveen NASDAQ 100 Dynamic Override Fund, QQQX. We're tracking the data here based on the assumption that you invested $100,000 on January 1st into any of these different investments. We're going to be tracking what would happen if we reinvested any dividends that we receive. We'll look at the dividend income earned. We'll also look at the overall portfolio balance, and then we'll calculate a total return. And then after we look at this table here, after looking at these different metrics, we will also take a look at two separate graphs. One, to track the overall portfolio balance over time, and then also to measure volatility. All right, so if we're looking at dividend income over this period from January 3rd through May 25th, the top result is surprising. I think most people would have assumed it was QYLD, but it's actually not. It's XYLD, the Global X S&P 500 covered call ETF which earned $4,828.72 during the period. The actual lowest level of dividend income is actually DIVO or DIVO. And part of the problem here is that they hadn't received a May dividend payment yet, and I couldn't even see what it was going to be, so I couldn't include it. And that could be skewing the numbers down a tad bit for this one. You also see that QQQX, which pays quarterly dividends, is down there near the bottom. This is only based on one quarterly payment. All right, let's take a look at portfolio balance. Now, first thing right off the bat we can notice here when looking at portfolio balance, we remember we started with $100,000. We reinvested dividends, and nobody is worth the investment we made, $100,000. Top result here is the S&P 500 Risk Managed Income ETF XRMI, worth $92,144 followed closely behind by JEPI and DIVO. There are quite a few in the mid to low 80s, and then we actually have at the very bottom, with actually no surprise, QYLD, worth only $71,868. Now this doesn't make QYLD a bad investment. It just, you need to be aware of the fact that it does lose value over time and it drops pretty hard, just like QQQ does, 
in a market downturn. So when we factor in both the dividend income and the portfolio balance, let's take a look at total return in dollars and the same total return, but in a percentage basis. As you can see here, the total return number here, $7,660.44 loss, actually ended up being the best performing investment during this five month market downturn. You can also see clearly here that the total return numbers here are pretty significant losses for the bottom half of these investments. So now that we've looked at the table here, let's take a look at a graph to see the results over the time period. Now I recognize that there's a lot going on in this graph, but let's see if we can identify which ones had the least amount of volatility. We've actually got a volatility graph we're gonna look at in just a second. I've also included in black and white the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500, and you can see how they compare against these different ETFs. Some of these have some pretty wild swings here, especially down here. However, there are some that have pretty stable volatility. You can see that this one right here in pink, which is XRMI, is pretty stable throughout the entire period and comes in at the last second and is able to take first place. I just realized that all these squiggly lines coming together, they actually form an image to me. It looks like there's like a, like a squirrel here looking straight up this way. Those are the eyes, there's the snout, and then there's the big bushy tail right here. The green news, as you can see, is that the majority of these investments, while they might not be perfect and they lose money, they actually outperform both the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. So some thoughts here, XRMI won here. And honestly, I'm not surprised, given the fact that the market was in a downturn, and a prolonged downturn, we were losing money month over month consistently, the protective put that XRMI uses, 5% out of the money in addition to selling covered calls and generating premium, did serve them well. And what's interesting is if we look at the actual variation or difference between XRMI and NUSI, you see that it outperformed by a significant margin because NUSI uses a protective put 10% out of the money. So the market has to go down much further for that, for that protective put to actually add value to the investment. So here we isolated down to QYLD, QRMI, XRMI, and NUSI. QYLD is here just because it has the base data. I don't wanna lose any of the extra information. So what you notice though is QRMI in red Compared to NUSI, you see that NUSI drops further and faster and harder than, Q, than XRMI does. At the end of the day, you see a wide margin. XRMI is worth $92,000, whereas NUSI way down here is only worth $81,000. And I would also say that it makes sense that XRMI outperformed QRMI. All things being equal, the S&P 500 has lower volatility than the NASDAQ 100, which is exactly why you see a variation between XRMI and QRMI in the results. I was also surprised, to be honest with you, on the results from JEPI. I reviewed JEPI a long time ago from JP Morgan, and uh, I, I was not really impressed in my first review of them. They really focused on lowering volatility as well as generating income, and they did a, not a terrible job of generating income, but I found that the volatility was high. But you look here, it, for the most part, it was outperforming XRMI in this results until only the last minute when it dropped a little bit farther than XRMI. So that's fascinating. I may have to take a second look at JEPI and see if it has a place in my portfolio, or at least is worthy of a second review here on the channel to see if it's a good fit for you guys. This one is kind of interesting. It's our daily volatility chart. We wanna measure, or at least it might bring us some um, comfort to know that our stock is less volatile than others. Um, but really as a cash flow investor, it doesn't matter too much. But here is a daily volatility chart chart going back to January 3rd, and we can see some trending here. Some investments are consistently making new highs and lows above and beyond what we see with others. By far, we can see a trend here with specifically two investments in red and yellow that have done a great job being low volatility. Some of the most volatile stocks include QQQX and NUSI. I isolated this down a little bit further to include just QRMI, XRMI, and NUSI, and what's fascinating, and I guess not all that surprising, given that NUSI uses a 10% out of the money protective put versus 5% for QRMI and XRMI is, we see more volatility with NUSI. I also find it interesting that QYLD actually had lower volatility than all three of these investments throughout the entire process. You'll notice here that JEPI actually had a significant amount of volatility compared to these other investments, factoring in QYLD, XYLD, RYLD, actually you'll notice here, QYLD is in red, pretty low volatility. Yellow is, is XYLD and RYLD is actually, it's actually pretty hard to see them right here, they're the darker green. Let me just adjust that real quick. So, and then you've got RYLD here in purple. All three of these investments had lower volatility than the others, QRMI, XRMI, and definitely JEPI being the highest. Remember, as a dividend investor, we don't care significantly about portfolio value, though we should be mindful of buying investments that are not going to just 
get tanked and lose a ton of value. We buy quality dividend stocks, we buy quality dividend ETFs, and we hold these investments through market downturns so as to reinvest all cash flow for more shares of a very cheap company. In the very next video, guys, we're gonna take a look at regular dividend ETFs. Companies like the Schwab US Equity Dividend ETF, SCHD, and many others, 12 to be exact. And always make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. I respond to all comments I receive on the day I post a video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day. And please continue to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.